Have you ever wondered the most efficient way to maximize your volume while drafting from a static source? Well, today we're gonna to show you how to do that utilizing a twin tube drafting configuration. We don't go from zero to octopus. We build our system one tentacle at a time. Rumble! <laughs> the twin tube drafting configuration is the most efficient way to maximize your water supply in the rural environment. And it involves utilizing two separate intakes on your pumper and priming them individually to achieve superior fire flows. As you can see in this uh, pumper behind me, we have two intakes in the water that were primed separately using alternative drafting techniques. The first intake that was primed in this scenario was the front intake. And the front intake uh, is considered by most in the fire service to be a less than ideal option when uh, trying to draft. This pumper in particular is a 34 year old rig and it was capable of flowing just under a thousand GPM while drafting through the front intake. If I were operating in this scenario and coming down this rural road, I would position the engine like so. I would nose into the water source so that way I could quickly and easily utilize my front intake. While it may limit me for flow, it is going to allow me to very rapidly and efficiently establish fast water. This pumper typically carries 30 feet. This is what this department carries on this engine. So in order to get into the deep spot in the water, I'm only using 20 feet by nosing into the source. While it is not giving me the pump's rated capacity, it allows me to establish a rapid water supply to initiate my operation. Once equipment and manpower become available to me, I can start to build out a second intake with the available equipment. It's very important to remember that this type of operation is built in segments. We don't go from zero to octopus. We build our system one tentacle at a time. We start simple and then we expand to complex as equipment and manpower become available. The moral of the story here is that the front intake allows us to achieve a quick and rapid supply of water using the least amount of equipment possible. This rig is only using 20 foot of hard sleeve and a single strainer to get an initial prime using the front intake. Obviously using that front intake may limit the total volume of water that we need, especially if this pumper is tasked with serving as a fill site engine or if we are using this pumper to supplement a municipal water supply system during those large multiple alarm fires. Now, in order to understand when the twin tube operation comes into play and is super advantageous, the operator must pay attention to their compound gauge or their master intake gauge. The master intake gauge has a portion that reads, as you can imagine, in vacuum. And that reads in inches of mercury. And there's a very important number that we have to be mindful of while we're operating from a draft, and that's 22 inches of mercury. 22 inches of mercury signifies to the pump operator that they have maxed out their current setup, either due to a significant lift or a significant amount of friction loss in the hard sleeve for the flow rate that you are trying to achieve. When your vacuum uh, reading reads 22 inches of mercury, it should be a signal to the operator that they have to expand the system in order to get a higher volume of water. It does not necessarily mean that they are out of water. It simply means that their setup will not support a higher flow rate. In these instances, you'll see that we have put a vacuum gauge on our pumper that reads from zero to 30 inches of mercury. And this is done in this video to highlight how much that gauge moves compared to on your pumper, that scale is so small, so you may not see a lot of movement. When this gauge gets closer to 22 inches of mercury, it signifies that we have to build the system to increase the flow rate. We do this by incorporating another intake and extra hard sleeve. This hard sleeve will likely come from an additional engine on the fire scene, and it may take a moment to get put together. The ideal scenario 
means that we do not interrupt our initial flow of water through the first intake. We're going to build that second intake in segments, and once it is all put together, we can hook it up to the additional intake and prime it. The ideal option in this scenario is going to be to utilize the pressurized prime technique to prime the second intake, because it allows us to get all the air out of the hard sleeve before we open the second intake valve. This will allow us to perform a seamless transition from one intake to two intakes, which will immediately, as you can see, drop the vacuum reading. And this is because the total flow is now being split between two intakes, which means that the friction loss in each intake has reduced dramatically. In this scenario here, this means two things to the pump operator. If you have already met your current flow demand, the pumper does not have to work as hard to flow the same volume of water. If you haven't met your current flow demand and are trying to flow more volume, you have to throttle up and open more discharges in order to create the same vacuum as before, meaning that you're flowing more water. In this scenario here, the pumper behind me is a 1,250 gallon per minute pump. Employing this twin tube drafting configuration on this 34 year old pumper, we were capable of flowing 1500 GPM and we still had plenty of vacuum remaining. We had about 11 inches of uh, mercury showing and the limiting factor in this scenario was the fact that this truck did not have a big enough motor to flow any more water. We simply ran out of horsepower in this scenario, which is a really good problem to have. It is important to understand that the limited horsepower is not due to this truck's age. We have had apparatus in our travels that are one or two years old that have had the same problem. So when you are specking apparatus, it is critically important to weigh the pros and cons of purchasing a bigger horsepower motor. If you're a department that routinely operates from a static source in the rural environment, it is well worth investing in a larger horsepower motor because during these larger flow operations, it will make it much easier for that pumper to flow large volumes of water for the duration of its service life. In order to understand why this works and why it is so beneficial, the pump operator must understand what we are using the atmospheric pressure for during a drafting operation. At sea level, we only have 14.7 PSI available to us in order to push water through the hard sleeve and into the pump. That atmospheric pressure is required to overcome two things. Lift, which is the distance from the source of the water to the center line of the pump, and friction loss in the hard sleeve and intake plumbing. In this scenario here, we have minimal lift which is a good thing. In some scenarios, you may have way more than 10 feet of lift. Ideally, we wanna make sure that we never exceed 15 feet of lift during a, a drafting operation. Technically speaking, we can get to 25 feet of lift under most circumstances. However, the issue there is that all the atmospheric pressure that is available to us is utilized to overcome the gravity in the scenario. So that 15 feet of lift typically gives us enough atmospheric pressure to overcome gravity and friction loss in the hard sleeve for a given flow rate. In conclusion, there are multiple advantages to utilizing a twin or triple tube drafting configuration. However, the two major advantages to this configuration are going to be a reduced workload on the pumper if you have already met your desired flow rate. The other obvious option is that it is going to increase the total uh, volume that you are capable of flowing in a rural water operation.